sure. So if you're looking to fundraise a dollar hijab, we actually have a forum. Uh, we have a forum you can go online. Uh, you, you can submit a request to do any fundraising here at Dhanu Hijra. Um, I, sometimes I have youth that approach me, like in high school or college, because there are certain projects that they're part of or something that they want to do. We, we generally allow bake sales. So just let us know and say, hey, listen, we want to do a bake sale at Dhanu Hijra. Uh, we will allow you space outside to go ahead and make those sales. And that's, that's usually not a problem. Doing a fundraising means that you are renting the Dollar Hijra space, and so that you would pay for the space, and then you would come and you would do your fundraiser. I think Dollar Hijra is one of the few masajid that allow other places to actually come and do it, even even during Ramadan. So you, you can you can come and fundraise here, but we have the form online. If you just want to do a bake sale, then just send us an email, and we usually give permission permission for the bake sales. Is it true that a woman's feet have to be covered during prayer? There is khilaf. There is khilaf in this. Um, I, the, the Hanafis, they say, they say no. The rest of the madahib, they say yes, they have to be covered. Are sound effects considered music and is it halal to use? Well, the first question is, is music haram? Uh, and like I said, there's a difference of opinion on that. Uh, sound effects, some people allow them, some people won't. Uh, you can go back. I've, I've answered this question in detail previously. Does bump, bumping people on accident when getting up from sujood invalidate my salah? No, it doesn't. It's because you're not doing it on purpose. E even purposeful movements, even purposeful movements during salah. Uh, for example, um, if I sneeze and I cover my mouth, right? I'm, I'm doing that on purpose. Uh, the, the sneeze is not voluntary, but the hand movement is voluntary or sneezing into my sleeve is voluntary. Th those types of movements are allowed. If I have an itch, right? If I scratch myself, these are all makruh, right? It's disliked, but it does not invalidate the salah. Some of the madahib, they actually put number of movements. So if you do three movements, for example, they'll say your salah is invalidated. But as long as you are... You are, if somebody looked at you and they would consider you still in prayer, then your prayer would still be valid. But do your best to not move around too much in prayer. If we're unable to make du'a in our native tongue in our obligatory prayers, can we really embrace making du'a in specific things and in needs for them? Or are they... Make du'a after salah. So I, I, I know that there are... Um, I know sometimes we feel the need to make uh, du'a in the prayer because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that... Uh, a, the slave is closest to his Lord when he is in sajda, and I, and I understand that and I respect that, but uh, that is not the only place that we have to make du'a, right? We can make du'a at any time in any place. I, uh, sometimes I, I ask myself and I ask others, say, okay, is there a time that any one of us has actually dedicated to make du'a? So, um, the hadith of Nuzul that we had talked about previously where the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he descends the last third of the night, and he asks, he says, is there anyone who, who seeks from me? who's asking from me. So not only is it a time for prayer, but it's also a time for du'a. So it, we, we also should get into the habit ourselves of making long du'a and making long du'a and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trying not to limit them just to the prayer times. Right? The prayer time is very small. It's very limited. But if I'm sitting and I'm actively making du'a and I'm speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I should get into the habit of doing that outside of the prayer as well. Uh, if you forget something out of the prayer and not add, is the sajjah sahu any different or is it still too extra after the tasneem? It depends on what you forgot, right? Um, so, for example, if I forgot to do a certain dhikr or a certain tasbih during the salah, depending on the madhab, all you'll have to do is make sajjah sahu or you don't have to do anything because some of them consider it a sunnah. But if I forget to make a sajda, I forget to make a ruku'ah, right? I forget to recite fatiha. All of these will require me to do that rakah again, and then I do sajjah sahu. So again, it depends on what it is that you forget. Why does Imam Shafi say the Bismillah out loud? And Imam Ahmed said the opposite, because Imam Shafi said the uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is a part of Fatiha. Uh, this is based off a hadith of Umm Salama, where um, the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, Fatiha saba ayat wa Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim minha. Uh, Imam Ahmed, he responds, he says this hadith is, uh, this hadith is weak, and there's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, wa the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in a hadith Qudsi, ana qassamtu salat bayni wa bayni abdi, and he started with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, right? He didn't start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So this is, this is why there's a difference of opinion on this, uh, on this issue. Assalamu alaikum. I work at a gas station. They sell wine and beer. Is it haram for me to work there? Oh, man. If you cannot find another job, if you cannot find another job, continue working here until you find that job. But d d try do not stay here. Do not stay in this job uh, where you have to sell where you have to sell these things. Um, 
because the the issue with being a cashier is you're you're not the seller, right? You're you're just processing sales. These, these are two different things, right? You're you're not there's there's a difference between owning and selling something, and being paid to provide a particular service. Um, it, it, avoid it. Avoid it. Um, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll make it easy. Uh, what is the ruling on using tampons? Is it permissible for menstruating women to use tampons? Yes, it is. Uh, so you you have some. Um, there's some cultural hesitation in, in using them in certain cultures where they, they don't allow women to use them. But in general, they're fine. They're, there's nothing wrong with using, uh, using them. And um, for the women who need, who need to use them, for some women, it's, more, it's actually more convenient. But yes, I, again, there's, there, I, don't, I don't see any shara'i issue with this. There's usually more cultural issues that are involved in this, and Allah knows best. Allahu alayhi wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam.